speed on here. Okay, I put the other sound, the USB sound card in there, the one that works better. And I noticed, I figured something out while I was gone from recording. Uh, I kept only he getting, uh, you know, when I listened back to my recordings, I could only hear it in the right speakers and not the left. And I thought, well, better check the, you know, the, uh, my, uh, USB, USB, my RCA patch bay, well, it's got some speaker connections on it, too. It's really old. My friend's dad made it. He was an electronics engineer, and he had a little recording studio in his house. He made it back in the 70s or 80s, uh, I think. Maybe this <laughs> could have been before the 70s, but I think, I think it was somewhere between 75 and 85. And uh, when his dad died, he gave me that and some other stuff. I don't know if everybody did. And uh, <clears throat> I've used it for, that was back in like, somewhere between 95 and 98. I'm not even sure now. Oh, it might have been, oh, no, it was probably about 02, 03. Yeah, that's right. Um, no, let's see. Yeah, I got my, I had a new, I, I had a good job in 2000. I was feeling better and working. Got a new truck, brand new truck. Drove it traveling and working, installing telco equipment. And uh, then I had it for about a year after that. I worked for most of that year, and then they, they ran out. Of the, the telco boom was over. I got in on the tail end of it, and they laid everybody off. And, uh, well, I, they laid me off first. Well, I got sick, and they, they, said, they just said, well, we don't have any more work. And they, actually, that was a good type of company to work for I never knew about you know I never worked for tel uh, telco is telephone uh, the telephone company central office and uh, we were working for a contractor installing stuff and you know DSL equipment and uh, battery stuff and all this stuff and anyway um, they actually had a long tradition ever since back when it was Ma Bell that they took care of their own you know like when they got sick and stuff and they didn't fire me but they uh they really, I've talked to other guys I knew, and they really they were getting along on work, but I think the, the woman that I called to talk to, you know, about it, uh, I think she probably didn't want me to, you know, she, she, unless they were busy, they did, you know, they'd pick somebody else kind of thing, but, but they were real good. I got sick up in Oklahoma, and they sent, one of the bosses came up and drove me home in my truck, drove my truck, and they were good. I never had it work for a company like that ever, people like that. But, uh, I mean, the company, that that was one thing they did real good. The company itself wasn't fantastic, but it was okay. It was okay. We, I bought a cell phone, and they said they'd pay all the bill, you know, all the calls I made while working, you know, and they never paid me a dime. And they did it to everybody. <clears throat> but uh, that's the only bad, really bad thing they did. Uh, so, anyway. And I was paying like $100 a month back then, you know. But um, back to the thing in hand. Okay, so my patch bay, I wiggled the, the RCA connectors, you know, twisted them. And uh, they, they don't have great connections. They're loose and old, you know. And uh, uh, I think the uh, insulator in the center of them is something that shrunk when it got old. It's really, really hard. It's not, you know, like your normal RCA, you know, the insulators, if they, if it's a female, these are the ones in the patch bear all females, and if it's a female, it's usually kind of, you know, plastic that you could cut easily with a utility knife or something. This stuff's hard to rock. I think it got hard just because, you know, and dried out because it was so old. It still works, but you never know. And the other thing is, you know, when there have been something's been, uh, connectors been, uh, they're not gold connectors or any of that junk, which I don't see any difference. I've got plenty of those. And I see no difference unless it was real gold. Just what they call gold now doesn't have a drop of gold in it. It's just painted. or <laughs> Sometimes I think it's just painted as this Chinese, new Chinese stuff. Some of it, I've seen it, it just flakes off. Um, others that don't flake off, it's I think it's anodized with a gold color, which helps some rather than just, um, you know, bare uh Un uncoated uh, don't really know exactly what kind of metal those are they don't even they barely look I mean they don't really look all they're 
they're not brand new, shiny looking, but they're not all that tarnished. But anyway, a heck of they're ten times better made than the new stuff. I've got a bunch of uh, RCA patch cables that are well made too, but they don't stay tight. Uh, they're fairly well made. You, I did break the. I tried to squeeze them and I broke one of them one time. They're not super tough. But anyway, I'm going on and on. So his left channel came back in. Um, and I've already forgotten. I sat down here and started recording. I was going to go ahead and uh, just bypass the patch bay, you know, but I'll leave it like it is for this. But it'll happen again. It, it, I, it, I've kind of got, you know, it takes me a while, but if, if, if a speaker's quit working, I, I think I'm going around here for several hours. Well, see, this is a bad thing. When that was probably the only reason I didn't hear when I played. Uh, well, that was one of the things that was puzzling me. Uh, OBS Studio, I, I couldn't find the settings, but the older version in my older machine, I'm running Fedora 28 on it, I think, and it has a setting where you can tell it to, if you do have a mono signal coming in, only a mono signal, mix it just up. You could say mix. It's got, I, I showed that a while ago, all the channels you can set up and everything. Uh, let me open that up. So all the channels, you can go from one to six channels that, that you could record. You can record in surround sound if you want. But what you other th but you know, YouTube and uh, there's just not well, people aren't even really using it too much anymore, you know, they got sound bars and they're just stereo. So but I thought, well, it could be useful to just have it on in case there's another audio track or something or in case I wanted to do something. And uh, our, our case through software, it actually came in on one of these other tracks, and uh, but and you didn't know it, you'd lose it, you know. So uh, it mixes. Uh, there's an option to say mix uh, down to stereo, okay. And then the other one is if it's only mono, mix up to stereo. I haven't been able to find that, uh, but it seems like it's doing it uh, automatically. Maybe you don't have to set it anymore. But I'm in the desktop view, so you see more inputs and outputs. That one, three, uh, is the, uh, it says it's active, but I don't have that phone running. Earlier it said it was inactive. Phone three Wi-Fi audio coming in from phone three. Uh, I've got it muted. And then the desktop audio, and uh, it's sitting right there. You can you can see all the inputs if you do that. But it actually, it defaults right back to that. That's easier to read and look through anyway, only the things that are active. So let's, uh, well, Dad, gum it. I was going to set the audio levels. It's too low, I, lower than I want it, and I forgot to do it. Let me do that right now. And, uh, oh, that's, I wanted to have that up so I could see it. So, uh, yeah, see, it's barely even. And I, I can tell from the, I kind of listened through the last couple of recordings, and I do want to bring it up some. I've got the headset on coming out of the, the V amp so I can hear it. And I, like I said, I'm getting stereo out of the earphone now. Check one, two, check. So uh, <clears throat> when I start getting louder, I can't. Check one, two. It's too much. Check. Hello, check. Hey, Don here. Check. Hey. That's probably, oh, let's go back a little bit. Hey, check one, two. Hey, let's Let's stay right there. I think that'll be better, get a better sound. But anyway, the uh, I noticed that the recording I did with, let me take this off. Recording I did with um, the, um, this sound, th this USB sound card, is it's much better. That other one is so sensitive. It's really, you got to really back, the weak, you got to really weaken that signal to, um, get the uh, I just remember something else that made me go blank hey, you got to really weaken the signal to get it to work at all and uh, you know the output on the VM and uh, doesn't you can tell it just doesn't sound quite as good it's just a little more tinny than this one is so this is must be my favorite one I had got them mixed up I think I got that sticky note on that on that other one now uh, I need to do something I don't know, just mark on them or something. But uh, it works, but it's, uh, 
But at, at different machines, they'll work. One or the other, uh, one will work better. And then, you know, like different machine, not just, it's not just the operating system, but the hardware, you know, it's really odd. Some of them, it won't work at all. Like my Dell, the reason I bought them, the Dell 6000 laptop, uh, I had it out in the garage and were messing with some older, old, I keep my really old computers out in the garage and uh, or stuff I haven't done anything with yet. It's out there messing around one day. And spending some real time out there, and I, uh, um, I had a, a long cable going from the laptop to my little. I have a little speaker system out there, and it quit working. And so the first thing I did was I had I had two cables patched together because to get far enough, you know. First thing I did was um, that's not where I can reach it. First thing I did was grab the connector and unplug it, and plug it back in to check it, and. <clears throat> It, I think I heard a little noise, a pop noise, and heard smelled some smoke, and it burned out a. Didn't have a. It didn't have that uh, that, you know, line out. Didn't have a. I think it has a line. Had a line out and an earphone out maybe. But anyway, it burned up the internal sound card, and it's. I never dared that thing. Those things are so hard. That one, so much work to get them apart. I didn't even. I don't think I. No, I never did take it apart. And I, because I remember at some point, you know, about those little sound cards, and I got. Two, you know, I got one. It was two dollars, and <clears throat> I thought, well, I like that so much. I'm gonna get another one for two dollars, and I got another one. And you still see them; say they look identical, but uh, they're like you never see. I never see them less than seven dollars or twelve dollars now. So anyway, uh, one of them works in there, and the other one doesn't. But it's real weird. Uh, like uh, when I was using it uh, before. Oh, before I got my TV, that's when I had that long cable running over to get the sound out of the computer, out of the server. I was having, I was using for a long time. I was using a USB sound card, and I wasn't using an input. I hadn't set up OBS Studio yet, so I tried it one time, I think. But uh, yeah, I did try it out. That's what that cable that I was using for my input just now, and that's why I had it running over. To, it was going to my patch, but yeah, I was right to send the sound out through the USB sound card. Uh, to my speakers, and I didn't have the, I was using my regular 23-inch monitor, you know, I wasn't using it for sound at all, uh, it's just a VGA and DVI-D monitor, um, but the, when, once I got my 8 gigabyte uh, video card with, you know, audio and uh, video both, and ran my US, my HDMI cable over to the TV, and then out of the TV, I go to my, uh, well, I go to my patch bay and the amplifiers, but I think I'm going to bypass the I thought I'd just hurry up and use some of those uh, female female connectors to bypass it that I think they'll give me less trouble and then at some point I'll just go to one cable you know going from the I have to get to open up the amplifier my amplifier is two core amps since I have an old computer with two computer power supplies and I have to you know open the side and get in there and redo the input cable if I'm gonna it's just RCA RCA but I'd need a 3.5 millimeter to RCA. I don't know if I have any that are long enough. Uh, but I'd rather, I've been thinking about going through the mixer anyway, so I might completely redo it. But uh, I'm still only getting this, uh, you know, I'm not seeing that stereo signal no matter what I do. I don't know why I keep wiggling that cable. It's not, not doing anything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> This is working. Yeah, that's a good signal. Once in a while, it jumps up pretty high, but it's not pegging over there. And uh, it's not, I think it'll be good. It could be a little low, but really with digital, it's better to be a little low than too high until you get to that point to where you can't even turn it up enough to hear, you know, when you get things get quiet. That's, that's no good. But uh, let me turn this down. Yeah, I thought I had it. See, I had to turn it up a lot more on the other one. Uh, if I go to monitor only mute output, that output is not the output to my speakers. I can still hear it through my speakers. What it mutes is the output going to the recording or to the stream. I guess that's what they're thinking in the output to the stream. I was thinking of the recording, you know, because that's what I'm doing. It doesn't make sense, really. Well, it, it, you can, well, it doesn't make sense to mute your audio in the middle of your recording or your stream. Uh, that's that's backwards. What you should be muting is the. Uh, oh, what a mute. 
That's the only thing you can. I give you can't if you mute, you either monitor or off. Well, that's the way it is. Anyway, monitor and output. Of course, now it's going to echo so bad I can't really make any heads or tails of it. Check one, two. Check one, two. It echoes most. I think it echoes for two reasons because it's getting the double. Let me do that again, and you'll see. Now check one. See now you're getting a you're getting two more channels in the desktop. And that's a curious thing. Even though I'm seeing a mono input, it's going to stereo. I guess OBS is mixing it to stereo because you can see stereo channels in the desktop when you listen to it. So at least I'm getting two sides. It just bugs the living crap out of me that I can see two coming in at times and then other times I don't. I don't understand that. And now that I've checked out everything, because, you know, I, I, did, I went ahead and, well... When I bypass, okay, I changed cables. I didn't say that. I changed cables. I, okay, I I went over there and changed. That camera's froze up. That damn it! Why are you froze up? Wonder if I could turn it off and turn it back on and get it unfroze. No, I'd have to close OBS. Well, it's froze. I may as well try it. Turn it off. <clears throat> now let's get on the desktop again because that's with the Wi-Fi camera sometimes you can do that turn it back on and put it in uh, camera mode it's working now let's see it wasn't froze up on the camera it's just made me looking up at the thing I wonder if that one's working now that's on the Wi-Fi yeah it's still working so if I really need a camera, I can turn that one around somewhere else. This one is not working. So uh, where did it go? Yeah. I'm just going to, everything's been on so long, I'm just going to turn it off again. At least the computer won't be uh, working that, you know, that USB, working hard on bringing in that USB. If it's no use, there's no point. So anyway, I was just going to show uh, work. So I've worked for two hours or more getting that thing to aim at the monitor somewhat, and it's not good, but it's aiming at the monitor. So I'm not going to move it because maybe tomorrow or the next time I go back after, I'll uh, want it like that maybe. Don't even know. But uh, I... Uh, <clears throat> I've replaced, I've got a brand new little cable and then an old, and some new uh, RCA to quarter inch adapters. That's what I was going to show. And uh, I've got this, it's from back in the early 90s when I used to work with my friend's sound company. Uh, some of my, my emer I didn't say finish, uh, my emergency, some of my emergency cables. I have a box with, uh, well, I had, yeah, I had a, well, I had a, yeah. I kept it all, anyway, I got mixed up. I kept it in, uh, I still have the box where I have some new cables in there, some, uh, use, you know, cables that I use all the time, and then I ha and some really old cables that are still good. Anyway, it goes two RCAs to, um, to a uh, female uh, TRS stereo. And uh, so I've got it plugged in. The, the outputs on this uh, VM are uh, quarter inch uh, line level signals. Uh, like a guitar, you know, like a guitar plug. It's uh, meant to go to amps. You can go straight to a guitar amp. You then you can go one side or both sides. Uh, you can v configure this thing in so many. It's made to work with a st car, uh, either a stereo system or it's made for recording. Uh, it's not really meant to be an stereo system, but I've used it like that ever since I've had it. But usually I always go through the computer and then out to the stereo system. But it's made to uh, to send to send to uh, it's, my, it's my, one of its main focuses is for recording that's why it also has this one little set of effects is good for voice it's got some reverbs that you can use for singing they're not they're these early you know early 2000s Behringer effects are not real great ones but uh, but the uh, talking one when it's good working good it's all right compressor I keep worrying that it's this thing itself could be getting old and going out because uh, 
and that might be why I can't get two two signals out of it <clears throat> that it works and don't work sometimes uh, because it uh, for years the compressor worked and once I got it set right it worked pretty good uh, really and, and it didn't make any um, you know background noise or anything but it's been this whole uh, about a year or more uh, sometimes you can really kind of hear that background noise and I figured out I can really reduce it a lot by turning I, I always had the volume on full and the master on full that's what I needed to get the volumes I needed before I had a mixer and I ended up just leaving it like that because it wasn't noisy or anything and uh, now I run it through the mixer and then to the VM but I'm now I've noticed you you're always getting just a little bit it's more it's more than just a little bit now you can hear that compressor clamping down um, and so by backing off on the main output um, it's getting rid of most of that uh, I, I did back what I did earlier was I backed down until it went away and uh, well I've done it several different ways today but right now I have my mixer as I always did the optimal uh, gain structure to make uh, where the compressor is set I, and I, what I remember about the compressor I don't you might have choices like one two three but I don't remember any real actual settings in the compressor I set a bunch of effects up you know custom effects and I set up my voice stuff well, I don't remember if I set up my voice no I didn't set up my voice stuff on the on in Windows XP I was saying earlier uh, that's that's uh, what you need to run you know there's software that came with it and it's a lot easier for me to set things up in the, on the computer than with these knobs because it's punch this hold that turn that you know I can't ever remember how to do it so I have just made sure I didn't mess up my uh, settings one thing I do remember I keep thinking I can show it to you but I can't one thing I do remember is if you change something in what you're doing I have done that like I had a for talking and B for singing I used to sing some uh, well, I recorded some albums but I didn't really ever you know singing out much uh, and then number C was some kind of guitar effect or something I, I did I don't remember how I did it but I basically I guess I'd figured out how to copy you know like a or b over to c and then i adjusted the the reverb a little bit at one point several years ago i remembered how to get into the reverb for a little while and i changed it to uh you know a little little more what you would want to sing with <clears throat> that both sound too much now though as i've listened to them several times lately but um i um uh, I forgot that I was just sitting here in this OBS screen. Well, I'm I'm, I'm focused on that meter that and everything. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I have known good cables. Um, that little one. The only reason I don't just use it. It's just an uh, three point five millimeter, three point five millimeter, and it's not quite long enough. It will just make it over there into the closet, but it won't lay on the floor. You know, it's uh, the ends of it are, I mean, the middle of it's on the floor. I can, as long as I'm careful, I can get across it, but there's no way I can leave it that way. I don't even want like to leave it that way while I'm working because I'll forget and hang up in there and yank everything. Might even break something, you know, hit things all around with my foot or every time I've had something, see, uh, going from, going from my, where I have it to the closet. And if I leave the room, then I go across it. Or if I roll my chair real far back, I go across it. And the other cables I have running out of the closet, they run out of the, the closet beside my end of my dresser and then just a short two-and-a-half-foot spot at the end of my bed where they're exposed to where I can, you know, step on them or anything or trip on them. Then the rest is under my bed, but I do get my feet tangled in the ones that when it turns the corner and comes in front of my rack and to wherever they need to go, some of them go to the... Most of them did go to the patch bay, but none of them do now. Well, my uh, my HDMI cable goes up to the TV, and but the uh, USB cable it's really plenty long, the long USB cable, and I, I it I kept somehow getting it my foot under it. I don't know how when I was making up the bed and stuff and pulling it, but I have it. I have strain relief on both ends. I have twist ties on the ends by the comp on the computer and. One thing, I was spending a lot of time twisting everything up right to where I couldn't 
break something, you know, break my USB. I definitely, I've only got four USB connectors on that server. I want to break them. I'm using them all right now, and that's with that's with two things in my USB hub on that long cable, the the uh, ca uh, ca uh, endoscope and my uh, KVM switch that you know and K KVM switch that goes to my keyboard and mouse. So anyway, I still cannot get back that uh, that. Uh, stereo signal even though it shows that it should be a stereo signal now watch me just reboot the computer and it'll be fine uh, I think as hard as I've worked it I have a bunch well I won't do those updates now I'll do them later so it came up with 12 updates every day or two it comes up with and it'll come like I'll do t you know two or ten updates and then a few hours later it'll come up with some more and I used to, I've always set up my machines to auto update and I just don't pay attention to it. Uh, but uh, I haven't done it on this one. Main, the main reason I was wanting to do videos on the, all the different things, you know, that I, that I do, you know, how to, kind of like how to videos. And uh, oh, because I haven't, I haven't had a new, <clears throat> I've been running Fedora 28 and I haven't done any on any new Fedoras in a while. Done a few. I did the installation, some of them, I think. On this server, I especially want to do them on the server. That's what I want. Why I want to do it because it's on the server, a real server, you know. And I'm not running just, uh, you know, a hypervisor and all this normal stuff that everybody else runs. I'm running Fedora 32 uh, with my desktop, and uh, that's something that people are beginning to catch on to. You know, I paid 300 bucks for this server. $30 of it, $30, $35 of it was shipping. Sometimes they go the opposite. I almost bought another one a few a month or two, three ago because they had uh, they had one for uh, like 250 something like something around that in there. It didn't have quite as much RAM, I don't think, but uh, I thought, well, I don't need it. And I thought, well, I might buy it from my mom. And then I thought, well, I've got an A-Core. So I built her an, uh, a re upgraded her, her computer to an A-Core. But it was some things not working right because the processor was so much newer than the motherboard. So then I bought a new motherboard, and I still have not got that redone. And uh, it works, and I use it sometimes uh, to just to get on the grocery side that we get groceries at because it's got her account in it because I had it pretty well set up. But it's way outdated now. I'm not going to tell you how long I've had it not finished. <laughs> it's way outdated. The operating system's way outdated. It's older than Fedora 28. I'll tell you that. <clears throat> I can't remember if it's 26 or 27, something like that, I think. Yeah, 27, I think. So anyway, I'm just rambling. I was rambling when I started. Maybe half of why I spent all night trying to do something that should have shouldn't have been so. I just got in my head, I'm fixing this. I'm not going to. I want it to work. The, tomorrow, I was thinking, I want it to work tomorrow when I actually do my real video. I'm fixing this. So now it's 5.25 a.m. and I ain't fixed nothing. All I've done was play with cables all night. And I figured out a little, oh, I figured out one mistake I made hooking it up. And then, anyway, the cable that I, you know, had in there earlier, the, long, the longer one that also has an S-Video, it's one of those, you know, it's for video, S-Video and two uh, audios, you know. Uh, I used to use it going from my TV to computer or the patch bay. To go. Well, I think I, I had it going to the patch bay to take sound out of the computer or to send it. Could have been using it. I think I've done both things. Just send it to a VCR, take it out of the VCR to the. What I always used to do is, you know, send. I've got an. I still got that old CRT TV in there. I haven't watched it hardly at all in years, but that's just still over there. Got a VC, not a SVHS v, VCR and a. And a DVD player that used to that has a tuner. The tuner works when the DVD drive doesn't work anymore. But uh, they didn't even make those. They didn't make them for very long. I don't think the I think the companies decided it wasn't a good idea to let people record on DVDs back when that was the best thing, you know. But because um, it was recorded too, you know, it's how I, I went from rec you know I used to watch all my shows, recording them on v VCRs for years. And then when that came out, I got one of those, and and I'd record my shows on DVD, and some of them I'd uh, copy, you know, backed up into the computer. 
gave a bunch of them to my friend to watch it and he never gave them back. <sighs> I didn't mean for him to keep them. He gave me, I've got, he's always making, take this, take this, take this. He's giving me more stuff. I'm not complaining. But uh, I've still got a whole bunch of his movies and I watch a movie once and I'm done with it, you know. And I tried to give them back to him the last time I saw him 10 years ago. <laughs> he didn't want them. And uh, they're still around here somewhere. They were in the living room, but I don't even know where they are now. Nobody's watched them in years and years. He watched the same thing over and over if he likes it. There's only been about three or four movies in my life that I've watched several times. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I'm a bit... Uh, how come... When I'm on the desktop... I don't see my, oh, you don't have, I was looking at my audio there, uh, screen capture and audio cam three. That's the only way you can do the Wi-Fi audio. You have to put it in as a, oh, it's an audio stream. And then, uh, and then it'll show up in here. But uh, in the audio, but then this is a standard audio device, desktop audio and mic aux, that's a default. Uh, and it picks up, uh, well, your mic input on your computer automatically or your aux input or, or uh, line in, you know, uh, inputs. So, um, it, I think it's, I have used it plenty of times in the last year like this and it was fine. But today it, it was worrying me because I wasn't hearing the other side, uh, you know, I wasn't hearing the left side. Didn't realize it was my speaker, you know, my patch bay doing that. Several different things I did find out. The patch bay connection, you'd get, I just, I'm down to like, I don't really have, you know, four connectors that are dependable on it anymore. Doesn't seem. So um, I think I'm going to have to take it out of the circuit. I've been thinking about going through the mixer anyway, so probably what I ought to do. Now, the thing is, is, if I'm going to do that, I really don't think I want to. First thing you would think is if to record, you'd probably use the control room output, but it was noisy when I tried it before. I tried it today when I bypassed the VM, and it sounded perfect. So one way or the other, it would probably be easier to use that for recording and always leave it set the same way. And... Uh, I can't remember. I, that's one thing. I just haven't been able to sit down and think it out. Um, like the way I have it set up, I just run it like I was doing a live show, you know, and the main outputs go to the V-amp, call it daisy chaining, and then the, from the V-amp to the amplifier, uh, well, n not to the amplifiers, to the computer to record. But if you were, gonna, if you were doing a show or if you're in your room, <laughs> then you would go, you know, normally you would go straight to the amplifiers from the main output. And then... It, and then uh, well, because, like I said, because they, the, the control room output was noisy, and I think it must have been my computer putting that noise in there uh, because I just tried it earlier this evening, and it wasn't noisy. But one way or the other, one of it doesn't really matter, you know, which one I send to the amp. It's really just which one suits my purpose uh, as long as they're not noisy or anything. I still have a feeling that maybe the main output will be quieter for recording than the than the uh, control room, but there's some cool switches and stuff that you can do that make the control room really kind of like it. You know, make you think, well, that was really made for recording. But uh, uh, well, and there's another way to record. Uh, there's there is two. R there's an RCA in left and right, and then an RCA out left and right, and it says tape tape in tape out. And so that would be good for recording. Uh, the reason I didn't do that is because in order to control that volume, let's see, how do you do it? Well, what it, it, what it does is it's just like a side channel off of your main. And so uh, if you were to use your main for your speakers and you went to changing things, you'd be changing the recording. So you can't do that in my situation. If I remember right, or unless it stays, some of them stay a line, it stays at line level period and your main doesn't touch it. I'm not sure. It may do that. 
tape out a good uh, right. I've seen them both ways on different brands of mixers. Tape out that's good, that's done right, should not. It should just be a line level signal. Some of them have a volume, some don't. Um, if you punch the buttons right, I think you can control the volume of it. I can't even remember now. I'm sitting here looking at it, but uh, you have some punch ins like the tape to main mix, tape to control room. Yeah, there you go. I think if you go tape to control room, that's where you get some volume control. Oh, and then aux return. There's that's what the, there's another main main volume for aux return, and then there's one on every channel for the, uh, your FX. Well, it's FX send and then aux return. Uh, so um, they have their own volumes. They have FX send and then uh, the. I'm not going. I'm going in circles again. Anyway. Uh, I just if I'm going to do any, um, if I was going to do yeah, I, I can't think again. I, every time I try to think about it, I can't. Usually, I haven't been feeling good for the last month, and I was feeling a little better last yesterday and today or today, and I decided to do this now, warm myself out, but uh. I'm not 100% sure there's a good way for me to simultaneously record as I also uh, send that anything coming out. See, going into the computer, you know, if I can go into the computer with one and then out of the computer to the amps with the other without affecting each other, then I'll be good. But I'm not so sure that I can do that. I mean, I could definitely set it up to be, you know, a volume controller and a mixer for my... I could mix, like if all I wanted to do is mix computers, I could do, I could do three and four and five and six, I would do two computers. And if I really wanted to use my mic channels, well, if it's going to be stereo, you'd have to do one and two both. You can do that. You can run a line level. There's line inputs, you know. There's XLRs and, uh, well, they're, uh, they'll take quarter, they'll take st uh, T TRS or TS. TRS is not stereo in that case on, on the mono channels. It is a balanced signal, just like an XLR balanced signal. But if you put a quarter inch in there, it'll auto detect it and it'll take that high impedance signal from a quarter inch. It should be a high impedance if you're going to do that. It's not for line level. It won't work well with line level. You have to turn the gains up and it'll get noisy. Uh, but the ones that are for line level, three and four and five and six, that's the ones to use for a uh, line level signal now if you have a um, unbalanced so well you can put a guitar in there should be fine and you could do two you have two channels you know like say the vamp it has two left and right separate outputs i could put the vamp if that's what i was wanting to do uh, i could put the vamp output into the mixer on you know three and four let's say and uh, and then go out of uh, you know the main or the control room output to uh, the uh, speakers or to the computer but any other channel that was turned up would also go there go to any, any you know whatever is on whatever main is turned up let's see but to separate them out, I don't know if this thing has enough features to do that. There are boards that you can do that with. Machiavelli Z, um, well, I did recording with the Machiavelli Z for, I uh, volunteered for a cable TV show and we were doing, uh, I always mix for Christian uh, rock shows, you know, or, or punk or metal or hardcore. And uh, at one point I was volunteering for cable TV shows over in Dallas called cable access um they they let you come in and make the shows for free and this guy got to doing that and he you know i ended up volunteering you know to help him and i was mixing the sound he was putting on shows and he was hiring a sound company and i was just taking his feet off of the soundboard the guy was real nice and he hired and uh, he'd let me plug into his board and uh i sent it through a mac 16 channel vlc but i wasn't losing all that many channels and uh, recording it to a camera. I was also running a camera, just a still shot, wide shot camera. But I'd record into the camera. It was what were we using? 
I think we're using SVHS cameras. Uh, well, we're using, no. Well, oh, in the studio, we used studio cameras. They were old tube cameras. I actually ended up buying one like that after that on an auction. Uh, they were ten, when they were new, they were ten, ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollar cameras. The one I got was a uh, twelve plus fifteen, twelve plus thousand dollar camera. Only. It was a new, the Sony VVP3. I bought it in like ninety seven or something like that. For three hundred fifty, I got it for three hundred fifty bucks at an auction. I got really lucky on that one. I met. Uh, there was just this one camera that a guy. I don't know he was helping out with the auction or what I guess he was and it was his camera and he was wanting to sell it and somehow I got to talking to him he's a nice fella and he told me all about it and uh, so I knew that was the one I wanted because I knew its condition because at this auction you didn't you know you just you walk in you look at look this stuff over and figure if you want it or not you know and uh, it was a great camera um of course, now it's, well, you know, the funny thing is, it would still stand up. Uh, it'd stand up with this supposed 4K camera. Only thing is it's 4.3 aspect ratio. But with, it, with that, uh, it's don't have a, a lens, a Sony lens. and well, Anyway, it had a Leica lens. I guess it had, well, I have a Leica lens, a Sony Leica lens. I think that's what was on that one. And, I actually bought two of them. The other one I got even way cheaper, and uh, I ended up selling it. I took them to a, somebody told me about a camera shop up in Dallas, and I took it there, repair shop, and uh, for professional gear, and I took it there, and they they tuned them up for to get the colors as good as they could and everything, and I used that one. And the other one, I thought, well, what am I going to do with two cameras? You know, the other one was a JVC, I think, and. Uh, I sold. I let him sell it on consignment, and I got two hundred fifty bucks. I think he sold it for three hundred fifty or something. <laughs> I should have kept it for that because, and I still, I didn't pay. I don't remember what I paid. Now it was, I don't know if it was fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, or what, one hundred twenty bucks, one hundred fifty bucks. I know I made, you know, I know I made at least hundred dollars on it. But I sold later, a couple year, two, three later, I sold that other one for fifteen hundred dollars. And they were both the same era and everything. Yeah. So that one should have, that one really could have been worth, uh, you know, a thousand at least, you know, 600 at the bottom. There wasn't uh, really anything wrong with it. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember. No, the one I kept was the one that had, had a little bit of well, tube cameras. The tubes, well, you can actually do it to them by shining, letting them stay on at point at, I don't know, bright lights or something. I can't remember what is it causes it but uh or not white balancing them right or something but you had to manual white balance it and everything it had a, a motorized zoom but it was manual focus and uh i had learned how to do that volunteering in that cable tv show so i knew how to do it and uh um anyway the other one i think that one the one i kept sony I think it had a very little slight uh, spot on one of the tubes, and you could see it. You know, it's always there, but it wasn't real bad. I can't remember about the other one. I just remember the colors looked better on it than the JVC. That was the other thing. You know, back you, I wanted to do professional work at the time. That's what I was wanting to be able to do, and I, and the colors weren't uh, perfect together. You know, and I thought, well can't you know switch from one to the other and have it look right and that was one of the rules they said always match your colors you know but nowadays after all, after all these years on youtube with all the all the different things everybody uses and i've used i would love to have that both of those cameras the way i like to do the like two cameras in one you know like two two 4.3 aspect ratio cameras fit perfectly uh side by side in a 1080p palette so and that's what i do with uh, that's what i do with my phones they well i can't stream any higher than 720p so i put uh I'll, you know when i do double shots i'll put uh, i know the camera's off now but uh let's see 
one in desktop. There we go. I got that set up. Of course, desktop's a little wider, but uh, I had to do, you know, to make it look right and make it show everything, it's a little wider than the. Uh, so it's at 1080p, and this is pretty much at 720. So it looks like it's, yeah, I guess that's what it's showing up as. That is what it's streaming is 720, and then this would be 1080, and then the whole palette is 4K. No, the whole palette is, no, I'm sorry, the whole palette is 1080p. The black, you know, with the black and everything. But, so that's almost divided in half, but it didn't look right with the desktop to not, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, like, see, I don't know if you can see the, I don't, you probably can't see the blue lines that go around them when I hover over them, but anyway. <clears throat> um, I'd have no reason to still be talking, so uh, my throat's getting dry now and ho getting hoarse. It's almost six o'clock. People will be getting up. I won't even be able, I'm getting hungry. I'm going to have to eat. I won't be able to get in there to eat. So uh, I guess that's what I'll do. I'll go get something to eat right now, and then I'll pick everything up. I feel dirty now with all I've been doing. I really need a bath, but we'll see how tired I am. I already had my supper, and I was just going to fiddle. I knew better. I was just going to, like, make one video and then go to bed. And then I realized, oh, I'm not done setting up. So I finished setting up. And then, well, I ain't done setting up yet. Well, I guess I am now. I can use it now. I'm pretty sure. I had to look back at this, but I'm pretty sure I can use it now. So uh, even though everything's not on, I wish camera four was on. So there's the beginning titles. Desktop, which I've been on all this whole time. Cam one is still running, still streaming. Okay, I think sometimes it will just work forever. It's not. It's not as behind as it was hours ago. It's crazy how Wi-Fi. Well, Wi-Fi gets. Over, you know, it'll drop frames to try to catch up, but sometimes it's doing good, sometimes it's not. So I'm still frozen there. That camera's. I just turned it off because it wasn't working. And two camera two. That's black size because camera two's not there. One in desktop. And uh, that's not one I would use, you know. I would put both of them together, but sometimes camera one is not pointing at the de at the monitor. Most a lot of times it's not. Camera two again, okay, two and four, uh, two and desktop. Camera four. See that I made it fill the whole thing. It's not. It's not. It's not sending out 1080p. It's sending out the one right below it. Uh, Twelve something. Maybe, or is it right above it? Now I can't even remember. Uh, yeah, I guess it's right above it. But anyway, it's frozen. And it's that's the last picture it saw, and it just keeps it. That's just what OBS does. And there's a four desktop. Of course, it's frozen. Endoscope is still on. Sure, it's still there. I, might, I brought it down closer so I can't see the whole thing now. It's still working. See, sometimes you can go for hours and hours. I mean, this thing's been on all night now. I, didn't, I hadn't run in video all night, but all this stuff has been up and running all night. But what's funny is that the USB camera is on. That. I, it, I didn't do anything. I didn't. Uh, maybe I went into settings, and I don't remember. I don't. I try to make sure and stay out of it. The USB cameras, if you go into their settings while they're streaming, it'll lock them up like that. I don't think I did that. Anyway, there's... Uh, one and endoscope, endoscope and two, two's not there, camera four and two, and then end titles, and uh, I'll go to the end titles and the music, and then I'll go, all right, bye-bye.